So, the last episode of Mushoko Tensei, at least for this season, has aired. Episode 23 literally just came out, and these are kind of my first impressions and reactions to the episode. It was, to say the least, a very bittersweet episode in many ways, but I would say there's more sweet than there is bitter to grasp on here. This episode, to me, is the perfect ending for Mushoko Tensei. I don't think you could have really gotten any better than what you could have got with this ending. So we're gonna talk about all this episode, but as well, at the very end of the video, we're gonna talk about some theories and what a season two may look like. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. So when this episode started off, I actually thought we were gonna have a Ghislaine and Eddie Sue episode, which actually would have been pretty cool to have on its own. But now looking back, I don't know if that would be a great last episode for the series. In reality, it's switching between all of of the major parties and as well at least some of the secondary parties we don't really care too much about at least in terms of importance in this series so it, it, it's actually a really nice way they did this in my opinion because it kept the pacing up it kept the flow up every you know i would say every minute or so you would switch to a different party or group of people or person and you'd get their experiences at the end of the series while rudy is going through his thing and there's a thread that really ties all of it together in my opinion and that is people believing that rudy Rudy is like this super strong guy that can do anything on his own. This is something that we've seen pretty much throughout the entire series, mostly with Eris, who believes that Rudy is like this really strong and powerful person. Rudy, though, on the other hand, through most of this episode, he's in this depressive slump and he feels like, well, people can't change and all of this this judgment that's clouding his head because of his past experiences being bullied which was a very big focus of this episode i think this is the most we've seen rudy in his past life and it was quite phenomenal to say the least i thought everything that they did with that was perfectly beautiful because it set up how rudy by the end of the episode didn't really necessarily get over that but moved on from that and despite his depressive slump despite what happened in the past he made the change to, to to not go through that again to not sit inside all day and then you know one day go outside and get hit by a, a truck and get you know reincarnated and all that stuff he is going to step out now because he has people that he has to save case in point zenith who he has this dream of at the end of the episode and i, I think i put it as a thumbnail of this video because i think it's the perfect thumbnail for this video it's zenith who's just saying i love Love you to Rudy and it's such a great moment you know like it made me tear up a little bit because it just goes to show how tightly knit that family is even <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird family. They all love each other. They all care about each other, no matter what. And yeah, they do some stupid stuff and they make a lot of bad decisions, but it, there's a dynamic there and you can't deny that. And Zenith is this figure that still is left out there. Well, Zenith and Sylphie, but Zenith in particular, we don't know where she is. She's in danger or something like that. We don't really know. My guess is that she's in danger and they got to go save her, but she, apparently she's on Begoret continent. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, in the labyrinth city of Rapan. So she's over there, she's doing whatever she's doing. Hopefully, you know, not, you know, hurt or anything like that because you guys know how much I love anime moms, but Zenith is going to be a really big focus of season two. I can already tell, at least for the first, you know, handful of episodes. And I'm totally okay with that because the way they set up Rudy's relationship with Zenith and that dream at the very end made me go, all right, I'm all aboard season two. I don't know what's going to happen, but this is just really interesting in my opinion. The era stuff in this episode is actually pretty cool as well because it seems her motivations for leaving Rudy are pretty much just she wants to get stronger and make sure that she can protect Rudy, which is very admirable of her. But my God, Eris, the letter you sent him, the letter you wrote him were not well matched. Of course, he'd be in a depressive slump. You could have just said, hey, I'm going to go out to train so that I can get better. I don't know why she worded it that way. I just this. <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt my that that would break that would break my achy breaky heart too you know if i were to get a letter from a girl that was just like yeah we're not well suited for each other we're not well matched and reality she's like gonna go like i don't know get a, an amazing job to provide for me better like oh my god i <laughs> i'd be destroyed I'd be distraught but no eris is just like yeah i still love rudius yeah that's me she shouts it from the top of a hill a rock just, i love rudius and like that's 
really cool and all, it's just that letter is, it kind of sent Rudy into a major depressive slump that he's just been going through this, this the whole time. All because of what she wrote and how she worded it and how she said it. I, I don't know. I thought that was pretty interesting though that she actually still likes Rudy and wants to, you know, be strong for him and protect him because he was, you know, for, in her mind, was kind of pulling all the, the weight, you know, it was, was, all of it was on his shoulders. Reality, I don't think that is much of the case. I think everybody was, you know, doing, you know, you, you know, I think everybody was pulling their weight equally. I don't think it was necessarily a situation where Rudy was just hard carrying the whole time. I don't think that's it. And even Rui Jurd, I feel he even kind of thinks that way. Rui Jurd in this episode had a pretty cool, like, little story there. He goes out and he's slaying a bunch of monsters and stuff, and he's getting praised for it. He meets uh, a bunch of strangers traveling, and they're like, yo, you're a super... And he, like, shows him the gem on his head, and they love him. They absolutely adore him. So you can see, like, the curse that was once there really isn't there anymore, at least for Rui Jurd, and he is happy because of that. He's actually being accepted by people. And in this instance, he's not only being accepted by people, he's being praised, which I'm sure for Rui Jurd is a brand new experience, like brand spanking new right off the lot. Because as we've seen when he was first introduced, it's very much the opposite. And even in this season, in the first couple episodes, we see that, well, people are absolutely afraid of of Rui Jurd's race still and people like Rui Jurd. But with the, you know, with the curse being removed from Rui Jurd, it seems like that's going to be a thing of the past. And I think when we next see Rui Jurd again, he's hopefully going to be a very successful man because he deserves it. Rui Jurd's the best. Like, he's best boy. Absolutely. Like, he's one of my favorite characters in this series, no doubt. And it's only just because he's this silent, like, type that's just, you, you can't help but love the guy. He's just lovely. I think the after credit scene, which by the way, if you didn't know there's an after credit scene, you should now, was really cool as well. It sets up the second season, well, the potential of a second season, because we don't have any confirmation as of yet. We'll talk about that in a moment. But Sylphie is there. She's pretty much vouching for Rudy to as this great person, and they, they almost can't believe like this guy actually exists. It's pretty crazy how much that Rudy has been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time in this world that people are treating Rudy as like he's this all great person that can't even exist because he has accomplished what he has. That's just a really cool thought to think about. He's done a lot, but it's really cool to see Sylphie again. Apparently she has gray hair now. That's really interesting. The people she was interacting with is pretty interesting. So I wonder if in the next season we are going to see Sylphie and Rudy team up with, with this team of people or go to this, the, the, the school, you know, that, that he, that Rudy originally wanted to go to with Sylphie. Are we going to see that? That would be pretty interesting. Maybe a whole season in Hogwarts. That'd be weird, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, but I'm down. Put down in the comments below what you guys think is going to happen next season. And speaking of next season, we got to talk about the potential of a season two. Is it going to happen? Because it didn't, they didn't really announce it at all. I was expecting an announcement at the end of this episode that Mishoko Tensei would be getting a season two. I guess it's one of those situations where they haven't thought about giving it a season two yet and they're probably like the committee that worked on this are probably gonna have to think about it for a little bit because usually these days I more than not expect sequels to be announced at the end this is not the days of anime where you'd announce series and they'd never get sequels this seems to be the day and age where sequels are abundant and they happen for seemingly no reason remember all those anime in the past couple years that got sequels that you thought oh how does how in the world did that get a sequel yeah I don't know why this one just didn't get an announcement for season two quite yet. I imagine it will in the future, probably in the next three months. It could be by next week. Like it, it could be that soon. So that's going to be really cool if that is the case, because Mushoko Tensei, I think would be really cool with a season two. I'm pretty much down for that. I know that this series is one of those series where you follow them throughout their whole life. As my alarm goes off, it would be really cool to see a season two of this series, especially with the continuation of things like Orsted and Nanahoshi. Like what? What are these guys doing? Where are they at? Also, they set up the stuff with, you know, the future with Zenith and Sylphie. And I think it's really cool because they set this actually up in a way to where you don't even need a sequel either. Like you don't really need, like if you're an anime only and you don't want to read this, you don't really have to. 
Like besides the Orsted stuff, like even then the Orsted stuff kind of is closed and shut for the most part. The only thing we don't know about is the Nanahoshi stuff because the Nanahoshi is the only thing that's really left open from that seed. That being said, I just, I would be perfectly satisfied if I were an anime viewer walking out of this, which I am. I am an anime only of this series. So I am satisfied. I am perfectly satisfied. Like this is a really good ending. It just closes the book on everything and it sets up stuff, sure, but it sets it up in such a way to where it's not exactly needed even though I do want a season two of Mushoku Tensei really badly, because that'd be pretty cool. Overall though, once again, I said this at the beginning of the video, this is the perfect ending for Mushoku Tensei. It absolutely unequivocally is. I don't think you could have done a better ending than this ending. Now, is this like one of the best episodes? Well, it's not like in my top three, but it's, you know, it's in my top five, I think. It's got a pretty, really good ending and it encapsulates all of what we went through in the last 23, 20, well, 22 episodes. So it did everything well. It wrapped everything up as good as it could have been. And it sets some things up for future events if they want to go back to that in such a way to where even if you are anime only, you're not going to pick up the light novels or whatever. Like you're not going to feel dissatisfied by this ending. It's a pretty closed book, relatively speaking, on most things. It, 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 this is great. Like this was just a really great anime. Am I disappointed with some of the things in it? Yeah, I thought the pervy degenerate humor stuff. I don't like that. I think that's pretty lame. I think it takes me out of the show more often than not. And I know people don't like when I say that, but trust me, I still like the series. I just don't like that part of the show. There's nothing wrong about that, but I still like it. I still think it's like a really good series. And besides all of the stuff that in this series that were less than favorable, I still think it's great. You know, I'd give it like an eight or an 8.5 out of 10. It's probably the best Isekai I've ever watched in my personal opinion. I'm trying to think about that. Is it? I think it is. I think I like this more than pretty much any Isekai I've ever seen. And you can name all the big ones right now. I still think it's better than all the big ones, but that's just my personal opinion. With that being said, please guys, share your thoughts and opinions about this season down in the video below. And before you leave, before you leave, I want to ask you guys a question. If you guys want to see like a full comprehensive review of Mushoko Tensei, please put down in the comments below that you would like to see that. And if you don't want to comment, just thumbs up a comment that has like, yeah, please cover Mushoko Tensei as like a review. So yeah, well, I would say while we wait for next week's video that we, we can't really. So while we wait for today's Demon Slayer video, which is coming out moments after this video comes out, check out um, these videos. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you later, bye-bye.